six. Just in time for Christmas, this entry comes tied with a ribbon. It's the most colorful saga in all of Dragon Ball. And it's conquering our hearts. With the 21st Tenkaichi Budokai before this, Toriyama would slowly put more emphasis on action and drama in the story. Luckily, we'd first get what I consider one of the absolute best sagas of Dragon Ball. This is actually my number four pick, and honestly, in my top five, the margins are slim. The Red Ribbon Army as an antagonistic force is a very different animal from most of Dragon Ball. Though several other sagas would have fewer but incredibly powerful antagonists, many of them inhuman, this is a whole army of what are mostly just normal soldiers with differing levels of skill, all in service of a Napoleonic leader. Now, of course, this is Toriyama, so our quote, normal human enemies, unquote, can still paralyze people with their minds or throw and ride pillars like they're speedrunning Breath of the Wild. The saga also clocks in at 59 chapters, more than the last two before it combined, which means it has plenty of opportunity to explore multiple locations, encounter many different allies and enemies, and build the story into an epic climax. Though, uh, epic isn't exactly the word I'd use because while Toriyama gives us an amazingly fun and fresh story that never sits still for a moment, the payoff is more on the emotional level in the Fortune Teller Baba arc rather than a cathartic level via the Red Ribbon Army. Not to say that there isn't plenty of fantastic action to go around. Between Goku's perilous assault on Muscle Tower, the deadly pursuit of General Blue, and two incredible fights with Tao Pai Pai, you'll never find yourself bored. But in the case of Commander Red and Staff Officer Black, Suboroshi. the actual climactic battle with the titular Red Ribbon isn't much to write home about, even if the events leading into it are some of my favorite moments in Dragon Ball. I'm sorry, but the reveal of Commander Red's ambitions being a product of his insecurities, only for Black to shoot him dead in response? How is this not in our top three? Beyond the action, there's also so many fantastic character elements throughout. To call the Red Ribbon Army a colorful cast would be well, incredibly corny, but also correct. From suave to silly, menacing to murderous, ruthless to useless, it's just so much fun to watch Goku work his way through that rainbow, and even make some friends along the way, including everyone's favorite Frankenstein's monster-inspired Robro, Aider. I'm actually surprised he's never mentioned in the Android arc, especially considering that Android 16 is essentially Aider 2.0. Eight times two. It's also worth noting that this may be one of the funniest sagas in the entire franchise. Murasaki's the best, and I will never get over the scene with the Neoribo. I'll be on my deathbed, and my death rattle will be me giggling like an idiot. Also, the Dr. Slum crossover is hilarious, adorable, and an all-around treat. Ignoring what the anime does to General Blue's character. But we'd be remiss not to talk more in depth about Mercenary Tao. As anyone who's seen our villains list will know, we have a particular soft spot for this fashion-forward assassin. And no, it's not a hole in our heads made by his tongue. That introduction may be one of the most memorable in Dragon Ball. He literally tongues a man to death. And ladies, he's single. Afterward, he murders Bora in cold blood, curb stomps Goku, and pieces out with his balls like the world's deadliest veterinarian. And this sets up for Goku climbing Kaden's tower and provides him with a new goal besides stopping the Red Ribbon Army. Revive Bora, Upa's father. As we mentioned in the King Piccolo review, the sacred holy water is a fake out. The actual effort to retrieve it was the real training, conveying the moral, there are no shortcuts to strength. Which the franchise would frequently and aggressively undermine as time went on. Here though, it's an incredibly simple yet effective way for Goku to make the necessary strides in order to win his critical rematch against yeah. Tao. This saga is also where we're introduced to the Sensu, magical beings that return you to full health. These would become a staple of the series, and luckily Toriyama would do his best to use them as a way to keep the plot moving rather than ways to resolve conflict. Because an instant undo button on major, even mortal wounds could very easily have robbed the series of tension as opposed to the Dragon Balls, which, yeah, never mind. Goku would then assault the Red Ribbon base and win the day, dismantling the army and ending their siege. But whereas some folks consider this to be the end of the saga, some of us believe that it actually ends with the Fortune Teller Baba arc, where Goku would find the final Dragon Ball necessary to wish back Bora, but also meet his grandfather one last time.
I love this finale. While the lead up to Goku meeting his grandfather again is mostly your average entertaining Dragon Ball comedy complete with some choice manga panels, this reunion means a lot for Goku and the audience. We see pure joy, love and nostalgia and it adds all that much more narrative weight to Goku using the Dragon Balls to wish back Upa's father. Dragon Ball doesn't have too many heartfelt moments like this but when they hit, they demolish. Also, the Pilaf gang shows back up. It's really funny, but they don't add much other than to give Goku another outfit and make American audiences super uncomfortable. Also a playable character in Budokai Tenkaichi 3. The Red Ribbon Army arc may not appeal to all Dragon Ball fans, but for many, this saga is the whole package. Action, adventure, comedy, with a sincere emotional finale over 100 chapters in the making. A hallmark for the franchise. Also, Husky. Oh, Husky.